All right, so we should be live. Let's see, share the links. Let's see if this one works. And try it now. It should be good to go now. We'll see. There we go. Okay, great. I am live. All right, so if you can see me and hear me okay, um, be sure to let me know in the little chat section. We have been um, going through webinar programs like it's our job. Um, you name one, we've probably used one. So we are trying Webinar Ninja now and seeing if it works out okay. Great. So Kate is joining in. I see you there, Kate. Um, thank you for joining in tonight to our L chat. Um, oh, good. You guys can hear me. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Hello, Ellen. Hello. I think it's Tasha. Is that how I say it? Tosha? Um, Crystal, thank you for joining in. And feel free. Hi, Amanda. Um, feel free as you're joining in to give us a little background on who you are, who your business, um, what your business is, even link to it. I mean, this is a great networking opportunity for these L chats. Hi, Marie. Good to see you in here. Hi, Joan. Thank you for taking the time out of your night to jump in on this L chat tonight. I'll wait a, just another minute or two and um, while people are filing in, and then I'll get started with finding your focus. Um, so feel free to say a little hello. Hi, Astrid. Um, and tell me a little bit about your business. Um, and leave a URL there too, to your website or to your blog. But it's good to see so many of you in here tonight. And it's fun to do this through um, a webinar and a live stream instead of on Twitter. I started doing L chats on Twitter and it was great and it was great for um, community and building a community, but it was a little tricky with the timeframes and it was a little hard to go back through and keep up with the content. So I decided to switch things up a little bit and um, bring things over into a live stream where I could delve deeper into the topics and um, and you could still join in and join in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with tonight's content and share my screen with you. Um, this will be recorded and shared on the Ellen Company website. So if you can't stay for all of it, um, that's fine. You can access it later. However, those who are tuning in live will get um, a special preview of something that we've been working on um, and an invitation to it too. It's, an, it's a resource. So a little motivation to hang in there until the end. Um, and like I said last time, if you joined in the last L chat, use that chat section um, and let me know what you're thinking about the topics. If you have any questions, um, that's what it's there for. And so please utilize that. But I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and we'll get started. All right, woo, only for a second. Okay, so um, tonight we're gonna talk a lot about finding your focus. Let me adjust my screens here so I can see your comments as they're coming in too. Um, tonight we're gonna talk about finding your focus and I'm gonna start with a little, um, a little story and we're gonna continue with this example throughout um, the L chat tonight. But last week, Jake and I visited Virginia to visit our families. And my older sister, Allison, is a stay-at-home mom of four, and she also owns her own business, an online shop um, called Minky and Pricket. And so it seems like every time I'm in, we start talking about business. And um, it was late at night, and she was telling me a lot about um, the products that she's hoping to add to her shop. And I'll let you see the branding there that we created for her. So she sews, and she offers... Um, a few products in her shop right now. She does bibs and burp cloths. She also does pouches, which you can see over here on this left side. And she's doing cloth napkins. And because she's so great at sewing, there are so many options available to her, products that she can be creating. And I think it gets a little overwhelming to her at times because people will see her work and say, you should really create aprons. I bet you you would create really cute aprons that people would want to buy. And another person will say, I would love placemats in those patterns. Can you make placemats? And so she has all of these ideas spinning in her head that she could carry out and do a fantastic job at. But because she's a stay-at-home mom and has four little ones, she only has so much time. 
So I think as creators and what I've been learning um, as I've been in business too, is that as creatives, we're always coming up with new innovative ideas. And, um, and there's usually no shortage of ideas of what we could be offering within our business. So with these surplus of ideas, we can't carry them all out into completion. And I think it can get a little overwhelming sometimes. And it's hard to know exactly where you should start, what you should be offering, what you should be doing. So how do you decide which ideas are worth pursuing and investing your time into? So over the next hour, I'm going to um, walk you through how to find your focus when you have so many of those good ideas, but you don't know where to start. So like I said, as creatives, there's usually no shortage of ideas about what we could be offering. And if you can relate to that, feel free to leave a comment in the comments section too. So I'm going to walk you through three steps. I try to keep it simple with three simple steps. Um, and step one is to make a list of all of your ideas. So you have all those ideas swirling around in your head and it's helpful to consolidate them and just get them all in one place. Um, oops, there we go, got us back. Get it all down in one place. So if you have a shop, for example, and you are overwhelmed like Allison with Minky and Pricket, if you're overwhelmed about all of the items that you could be listing in your shop and you really don't know where to find your focus, list all of your current products list all of your future products that you're considering. You might even list past products that you think about bringing back. Um, just go ahead and jot down all of your ideas on paper. If you have a service-based business, list your current and future services. Um, you know, you could be, I, I talked to a lady at a workshop a few weeks ago and she had a business where she was offering design services, she was offering photography, and she was doing screen printing with a shop. So she would list all that she does within all of those different aspects of her business. So if you're like her and you're just having a hard time figuring out which business venture to pursue and which business venture is worth pursuing, um, that's, where, that's where you would list it down, that one huge list. Your list might be one page. Your list might be 20 pages. Let's hope not. but. Um, just get all of those ideas down on paper. This is just a brainstorm. And something that I found helpful, um, and like I said, when Jake and I went up to Virginia and we were talking to Allison about all these ideas, we ended up staying up really late discussing it with her and her husband um, and just brainstorming ideas for a few hours. So if you have someone that um, is business savvy and, and really wise or just comes up with really creative ideas, Sit down with them and brainstorm with them. Throw all those ideas out there. I found that I'm even more creative when I have someone to bounce ideas off of. So this is your starting point. And if you're overwhelmed by all of those ideas on your paper, all of that, that long list, don't be overwhelmed for long because we're going to quickly move on to step number two and probably put most of our focus there. Oh, but first, going back to Minky and Pricket and Allison's business. So on her list, she had bibs and burp cloths, which she's already um, already offering within her shop. She has those little pouches that you saw in the picture beforehand. She was thinking about offering buntings um, that are really cute for party decorations or seasonal decorations. Cloth napkins. Um, because she used to be a teacher and a lot of people look at Allison's craftsmanship with everything that she sews and um, they're always asking her for tips on how she does things. So Jake and I were throwing out the idea of an e-course or a workshop. She has a lot of crafters following along with her. So because people are asking her these questions, we thought it might be worthwhile for her to teach other people through e-courses and workshops. And we also threw out the idea of kits. One thing that Allison does really well is pair fabrics and pair different patterns. And so one thing that's really helpful, we thought, Jake and I were brainstorming, would be that she could create a kit and she could um, pair those, those patterns and offer different kits with different patterns and maybe even a template um, you can tell I'm not very familiar with sewing, so I'm probably getting some of the verbiage wrong. But she could offer the fabric, the template, um, or the pattern, 
and maybe even some um, other sewing materials and then she could sell those too. So we just sat there and we brainstormed for the entire time. Um, I'm gonna go back to the comments and just check in. Oh, awesome, so many comments. Okay, we'll go back, but this is gonna be fun to read over later. This is awesome, guys. Thanks for, thanks for joining in the comments. Um, so yeah, so start here, just like Allison did. We could have kept going with these lists, but these are just a few of those ideas um, that might have been worth pursuing. So how did we narrow it down from there? Step two is to use your long-term goals as a filter. So this is where um, you should put even more of your time and energy. And really, any business decision you make starts here um, with your long-term goals. I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in what where we are right now and what we're creating right now, or maybe even what we hope to create in the next few months that we forget the long-term goal and um, especially as creatives we might not know what that long-term goal is we just love creating but it's worthwhile to sit down and really think about where you want to be three to five years from now what do you want your business to look like five years from now and um, for some of you that question might be a little overwhelming some of you you already know what it is and that's awesome but really think through what you want your business to look like um, so for Allison, she has young kids and a husband who um, works really hard um, and is actually going back to school right now. So she doesn't have a lot of time. But in five years, um, her kids will be a little bit older. She might have a little bit more time to invest in her business. And she could really bring in a solid income um, to help support her family. So where she would want to be five years from now, we discussed it, she could be teaching those courses like we talked about. Um, she could be selling those kits and if she did sell those kits, she could bring on multiple people to help her put those together. It did, didn't require her skills, um, her sewing skills, which if she's sewing bibs and burp cloths five years from now, she might be sick of it by that point. And she can only sell so many. It's not very scalable if she can't bring on help, if people can't do exactly what she's doing. Um, so that's something to consider. So think about your long-term goal, where you wanna be five years from now. That woman that I spoke with at um, the Bloom Workshop that I mentioned earlier that does photography and design and screen printing, she told me that five years from now, she wants to open her own um, boutique and storefront and sell you know, creative, um, one-of-a-kind items. So that helped us narrow down her list and think, hmm, how does screen printing help her toward that goal that she has for where she wants to be five years from now. So that is first and foremost. Um, second, what do you want to be known for? I think when you're offering too many things and when you have too many ideas, it can be really confusing for your audience. Um, you're complicating your message. So what do you want to be known for? It should be really simple. For um, Martha Stewart, Hers is normally, if you think of her, you think of homemaking, you think of recipes, and you think of um, entertaining and, um, and keeping an organized home, which probably isn't the best example because she has a lot of different aspects of her business. But if you think of Nike, you think of sportswear, and it's really just simple and distinct. So what do you want to be known for? So for Allison, I asked her, what do you want to be known for? She, her bibs and burp cloths sell so quickly, um, and that's really what people identify her with. If they have somebody who's um, who is looking for a gift for a baby shower, they always come to Allison and purchase one of her bibs and burp cloths. So she's better known for that than she is for cloth napkins, or than she, or than. Um, they don't really think of her as much with pouches as they would for bibs and burp cloths. So we sat down and we thought through, what exactly does she want to be known for? If she wanted just to be known for sewing, then she needed to be making a lot of different items. Um, and that's just too much for her. So it makes more sense to narrow it down. And um, in terms of those buntings that she was thinking about selling, she was thinking about selling them for $3. And not only would she might not want to be known for buntings, but she also can't bring in much of a profit from 
something like a $3 item. And we'll get to that from a, in a second. But um, for the lady from the Bloom Workshop who does screen printing design and photography, I asked her this question. What does she want to be known for? No one's going to remember those three things. It's really confusing. So what do you want to be known for? Um, I think also within this same realm, um, we get really attached to our creative gifts. And when we narrow it down, it kind of feels like you're losing something when you narrow it down. However, you might be able to, um, to use it in a different way. So for example, I had someone reach out to me not too long ago through an email, and she is um, a graphic designer. She went to school for it. She had a career in it, but she just became a health and nutrition coach. So she was asking me, she's starting a blog for health and nutrition. She was asking me, how do I integrate graphic design with health and nutrition? And my answer probably may not have been exactly what she wanted to hear. I guess she wanted me to come up with a magic answer. But I said, if, you're, if your blog is about health and nutrition, it doesn't really make sense for you to, to offer graphic design services. There's kind of a disconnect there. However, you can really play up your graphic design gifts and talents within the design of your blog. You can use it for printables. She had a really neat advantage as a health and nutrition coach to really separate herself from others in her industry through her branding and through her design knowledge. So even if you're getting, you're getting rid of one aspect of your business that you really love, you might be surprised at how it could play in um, in other ways that you may not have considered. So for that lady from the Bloom Workshop, which I'm not saying her name for just to keep that private. However, if she went more in the design realm, she could really use her photography to take photos of her portfolio. Or if she went in the screen printing realm, she could take really great photos of her products. So you might be able to use it in different ways. Um, question number three that you should ask is, what do you have expertise in? What are you really good at? Um, what could set you apart? If you are taking on too many things, that could really help you narrow it down. Um, what do you have the most practice with? What are you really great at? And then the fourth question is, how much money do you need to be making to generate an income? So while you have all of these fantastic ideas, you might be able to quickly roll some out and cross them off of your list if they don't make much money for you. So with Allison, it was the buntings. She's only selling them for $3. By the time she takes taxes out, um, and worries about shipping and all of that, she's really only making pennies. So is it worth putting all the time and effort into buntings? Um, maybe not, although they're really cute. So how much money do you need to be making to generate an income? And think through, you know, which, which outlets bring in the most amount of money. Of course, it's not all about money. You also, for a lot of us, we want to enjoy what we're doing, but you, it's hard to maintain um, a profitable business if you aren't thinking about money and if you're not thinking about income or else it's really a hobby so um, so think about that as well so as you're thinking through some of these um, different questions and you're thinking about your long-term goals look through your list and begin to consider how each item on that list holds up to that long-term goal how does it help you get there um, and then consider how the items left can fit together. So for Allison, here was her list. We rolled out buntings because they didn't really generate much income. We rolled out cloth napkins because they didn't really go along with bibs and burp cloths or pouches. And people could buy cloth napkins from somewhere like Anthropology or somewhere like that. Because fabric is so expensive for Allison and, and bigger companies can get fabric for cheaper um, and because it doesn't take a super skilled um, sewer to make a cloth napkin, they're fairly easy, we rolled that one out. Um, and for her pouches, uh, it was she was becoming more well known for the pouches, but with the amount of time that she had and, and the confusion between pouches and bibs and burp cloths, we just narrowed it down to just bibs and burp cloths. For right now um, and in the future that's where she could teach e-courses and workshops or offer kits so that seemed to make the most sense so as we went through we just talked through how are these things helping you toward your goal um, 
which is teaching and doing the kits. Um, how can we get you there? So this is how we narrowed it down. Um, so once you have your list and then you cross things off, you should be, your list should be narrowing down a little bit more. Um, then you can move on to step number three. And that's to create smaller action steps for each goal. So for Allison, her overarching goals um, were to move toward classes. However, she needs an audience to be able to do that. So we had that in mind for her goal. Her goal was also to cut back because she was feeling too stretched right now with her with trying to do too many things. Um, so that was another goal that we needed to create action steps for. For your business, you might have financial goals in mind that you want to meet. You might want to bring on more people. Um, that might be one of your goals. Your goals might be to fully book, um, book out your client queue. That might be another goal. Um, for many of you, your goal might be to take your business full time. So think through those, those overarching goals, whether it's one year from now or three to five years from now. I would start with the three to five years and then create a smaller goal for each year. So for example, you have your you know, big overarching goals that you're trying to reach. Um, those are the goals for where you want to be three to five years from now. So we're going to start paring down those goals. So um, if your goal is to be full time in three years, then you're going to break down those goals into smaller goals for each year. So for Allison, if she wants to teach courses, and I'm going to jump ahead just to show you this. She wants to teach courses in year three of her business. Then we're going to separate those years and, and dictate one goal for each year. So the first year, um, she's going to focus on building her audience. We'll get into these in a second. Second year, she's going to focus on gaining product recognition. So now that she has that audience, she can focus more on her products because she has someone to sell to. And we want her to be able to sell out every time she posts products and create that demand. And then in year three, she might begin teaching and offering e-courses and workshops once she's developed that audience um, and gained that recognition and um, developed her expertise in her industry. So I'm going to go back. So once you set those goals for each year, then you can narrow it down even further. So just think about this upcoming year. We're nearing the end of 2015 and getting really close to 2016. So think through the goals, the goal that you set yourself for yourself for this upcoming year. And then think of daily, weekly, and monthly tasks that will help you get there. So for Allison, going back, her daily goals might be to just stay active on social media and be strategic about what she's posting. She could be posting about um, helpful resources for sewing. She wants to develop that expertise and attract people who would be interested in her teaching and interested in learning more about um, sewing. Then she could be sharing things on social media about her favorite fabric retailers. She could be sharing about um, some helpful templates that she's found. She could be sharing projects that she's done and photos of her products on social media. So she has those that very overarching goal in mind, but she's breaking it down and focusing on the smaller tasks. For weekly tasks, we've been pushing her to start blogging more and more to build her audience. So she's committed to one blog post a week at first. Um, and then so she might consider sending a weekly email through her mailing list. And every week, every Friday, she posts um, new products in her shop. So she might narrow her focus to just bibs and burp cloths for right now in her shop and offer um, a fewer selection just so she's selling out every time. And, um, and that looks better for customers to see that she's selling out every time, creates a bigger demand for her product. So those are the things that she could be doing, just smaller tasks that are a little less overwhelming than you know, preparing course curriculum. <laughs> but they're smaller tasks that can help her reach this year's goal so that she can reach next year's goal and eventually get to year three and reach her long-term goal. 
So I would encourage you to do that within your business. So once you've narrowed your focus, then we're going to break it down even further into action steps to actually help you attain um, that goal and reach that goal. So I moved fairly quickly through the content, which leaves a lot of time for a Q&A. I want to hear specific examples. Um, so if you're having a really hard time paring down, you can have a little brainstorm um, and I can answer some of your questions. This is probably one of my favorite parts of these L chats. Um, and I'm going to take this off of myself and go, or off of the screen and go back to myself. So I'll stop sharing. Um, I also encourage you to stay through this Q&A because I have a really great resource for you at the end that I don't want you to miss out on. So bear with me just one second. All right, awesome. So I'm back. Um, I know I just threw a lot of content at you. And, um, and I'm going to start looking over into the content and, or the comments and feel free to ask some questions. Um, if you want more clarification on something, if you have a real life example and you're struggling with paring things down, let me know. Um, let me know in the comment section. Wow, you all left a lot of comments. This is awesome. Um, let's see if there's any already. <laughs> Squarespace. I'm glad that one's coming up. I should do an L chat on Squarespace soon. Um, let's see. Making a landing page, live webinars. Um, actually, someone on the collaborative just posted about doing um, webinars on Squarespace not too long ago, so that might be worth looking into. Awesome. Okay. I'm lost on how to choose what I want to be known for, so Tasha says. I am not sure what people would want from me. My two businesses are so different. Nonprofit versus spiritual coaching topics. So it de also depends on what your nonprofit is for. If they are completely different, um, it might be that you need to keep them completely different. If you're spreading your time um, too thin, you're spreading yourself too thin, then you might want to go with one or the other for right now, knowing that you can always pick one up later. Um, but for right now, to be profitable and to maintain either one, um, that you need to put all of your time into it. Uh-oh, we have some people having a hard time submitting comments. I'll have Jake look into that. He's in the background. Um, let's see. Branding questionnaire. So Astrid said she was just doing a branding questionnaire and was questioning herself along the way. She wants to help people, but she also wants to keep being a fashion, beauty, and lifestyle blogger and share her person personal passions in those topics. Um, Astrid, I can relate to you. I actually started with a lifestyle blog. And um, I started it right before Jake and I got married. I was graduating from college. I kind of wanted to capture that time um, in our lives. And then I started posting portfolio work, and then it just became a hodgepodge of everything. And Jake kept saying, you need to pare down your content. You need to get rid of those letters that you write every week. Um, you should probably stop posting so many recipes and things like that. And it was really hard for me to let that go. However, the moment I did, it became very much more clear what Ellen Company was about. It was really confusing at first, and um, and we're still narrowing our focus, trying to narrow our focus. But um, our traffic really skyrocketed, and I think when you are focusing a lot on yourself, um, for people who are just landing on your site, you're a stranger, so you have to give them a reason to care, and usually um, that's by focusing on them instead of yourself. So might be something to cons consider. Um, Stephanie, yes, this video will be available afterward. I'll also give you the slides so you can access them um, after this is over. Leah says, any thoughts on balancing the blog post creation with making things? So making things like client work or products. So those would go hand in hand. Um, I, I do blog post creation. <laughs> Actually, it's funny that you say this because I took a little blogging hiatus. Um, these probably three weeks, um, but I would just develop a routine. So what I usually do is set aside a certain amount of hours a day that I'm working on making things. So making things as in doing client work, or if um, 
or coming up with new products or coming up with new e-courses, I set aside a certain amount of time. And then for blog posts, when I was posting every day, um, I set aside a time every night, actually, um, of three hours, two to three hours to create a blog post. So I would just segment your time. I think that's the best way of doing it. But if any of you have other ideas for how to do it, um, feel free to leave it in the comments there. Let us know how it works for you. I know for my sister, um, going back to Allison, she only has so many hours. And so she set aside um, Mondays for creating blog posts and set aside time on, I think it was Wednesdays or Thursdays to photograph her work. So she set it aside in different days for different tasks. And if that works for you too, that might, um, that, that might work better for you. Great questions. Any other questions? I know we have a lot of time. Underestimated. Okay, awesome. Crystal says, my problem is I have too few ideas and I'm torn between focusing on stationery and selling gifts and accessories. Should I just start small first and see if it grows and then go from there? Great question. Um, actually, what I would say first is to focus on building your audience. So a lot of times, because we're creative and we have all these ideas, we start with a product or we start with a service and then we try to find an audience and we make it a thousand times harder on ourselves um, because we don't really know who our audience is. We think we do. Um, we think we have an idea of who we want to market it to. I would actually recommend that you start um, trying to build your audience. And a great way to do that is blogging, although I'm a little partial to it, but I've seen it really work for Ellen Company. Um, start a blog. Start talking about things that people who would buy stationery and buy the gifts and accessories that you're talking about um, would be interested in. And then they'll kind of tell you what they want and what they like. They'll give you feedback. As you get to know them, you're better clued in on what they would want and what they would like. And then you can start selling those products. Um, you have an audience to sell them to. So that's why with Allison, we really encouraged her to focus on creating that audience before, um, before she really started selling more products and, and putting so much time into creating products if they weren't selling on her site because she didn't have a big enough audience. Um, so I would start with your audience, and then it'll help you pare down as you get to know them um, what they want. And if you're doing um, cards and mugs, if you're doing kind of a gift shop, then stationery might play into that too. Um, but then you can you can really narrow it down. Um, how do you narrow it down as a designer? Okay, great question, Shay. That was something that I struggled with at first too. I started out doing wedding invitations, and um, and while I liked it. It was really hard to make a good profit there, and I also started taking on branding clients. And I kind of went through an experimentation phase of, and I think a lot of people do, of figuring out what I enjoyed doing and probably more importantly, what was the most profitable. And I really love branding and doing websites. The great thing about it, um, and that's really helpful, and that's that's why I got started in it. But the great thing is that I'm getting paid for my time. Everything is digital, you know sending people files and it's all online so I can make a sustainable income from um, that area of design. I don't have to work with printers. I don't have to outsource anything. So that's how I came to that conclusion. Um, so you might factor that in. What takes you the most time? What, um, what do you enjoy doing most? And then what you could really profit from. As a stationary designer, when, when I started out that way, I found it really hard to compete with big companies who could create um, cards and wedding invitations, even planners, for really cheap. And their over my overhead was just so high, I was hardly making any profit from it. So I hope that is helpful. Um, great. So I'm getting a lot more comments now. Michelle says she sells stock photos and printables. Do you think they have to be separate shops or would it work if you branded them together? Hmm. It depends. It depends on how, who your audience is too. So who are you doing stock photos and printables for? If you're doing stock photos and printables for people who have a business, um, and those go together, that, that could work. Um, you could offer them in the same spot. It just, probably depends on your audience. Um, 
And if that's your main source of income or if it's a side thing, if that's really what you want to be known for, then it might be helpful to just narrow it down to stock images or to printables, um, depending on what your five-year goal is and what you really want to be known for. If you want to start a really thriving stock image site for creative entrepreneurs, which I kind of think would be an awesome idea because the stock image sites that I found, like Unsplash, which is a great one, but they're a little hipster and they never fit in with the clients that I attract. So that might be a really good one. Just throwing it out there. Um, Ellen says, how to grow blog newsletter subscribers, a fitness instructor and blogger, unsure of what direction you go. So if you're trying to build um, an audience, the blog is great. Newsletter subscribers are great too. Um, I usually offering an incentive like a freebie or something like that is good. Um, really focusing on how you're going to benefit your audience is um, key. Thinking about not necessarily um, yourself so much, but thinking about how your content's going to benefit them. Um, people feel free to, to join in with newsletter subscriber answers. Um, Joan says, I wish we were all together in a room to keep this chat going. I'm so glad you said that because the resource that I have might, um, you might really enjoy that. Just stay tuned, Jen. Um, yes, gift shop. Thank you so much, Crystal said. You are welcome. Um, all right, so Joan says, still a life photographer here and love all things design related. I think as creatives, we can all appreciate other creative fields. I've seen that a lot. Um, and I love learning about other people's processes, especially with my sister. She's very three-dimensional. I did not get that chain. I got the two-dimensional. So I love learning more behind the scenes. You're welcome, Shay, and you're welcome, Michelle. Are there any other questions um, specifically about finding your focus? And if not, feel free to um, join in with other questions. I love this. Vanessa says, how would you build an audience with a news-based site? Hmm. That's a, that's a new one that I haven't been um, asked about before with the news based site. I think key for that one is to make sharing options really available. Um, a lot of times your audience will do the work for you. So posting um, frequently, which I would guess is a news, um, a news based site, posting frequently would be helpful. Um, I, hmm. I need to think through this a little bit more, Vanessa. I think as I think you usually, if you're just starting it, what I've realized with blogging and what we say often, Jake and I do, is you need a six month time period to really get things rolling. So once you're consistently blogging, consistently posting helpful posts, um, high quality content, if you do it for six months, you usually start to see a return from it then. It usually takes about that long um, for you to really push through it and get it up and running and get it rolling. And then you'll get to a point where the growth is exponential because people find your content, they share it on Twitter, they tweet out a link to it, then they're pinning it on Pinterest and exposing it to their audiences, and then people just keep finding it that way. Um, I would really utilize social media too for that. Um, but great question. Threw me a curveball, Vanessa. Crystal says, how long did it take you to start making a profit in your business? Ooh, this is a good one. What is the one tip you would pass on? <laughs> I actually started, um, so I started freelancing. I did the stationery and I was doing some brand work. When I started Ellen Company, I actually started selling planners. And like I said, there was so much overhead that I was, I was actually in the red. I wasn't making any money. Um, and that's when I started taking on design clients. And the tricky part then was pricing myself. I think I priced myself too low, but I really focused on blogging to bring in more people. And then as the demand increased, I started increasing my prices. Um, so I would say again, and I'm getting a little repetitive, but it's so true, build your audience because the higher demand you are, the more you can charge. Um, and then from there, when I was able to charge more in my business and with my two-week process, I was able to figure out how many clients I could take on. My income started to stay, um, it was more predictable. I would also really recommend having multiple streams of income and trying to be creative about where your income's coming from instead of putting all of your eggs in one basket. So for Ellen Company, I had the design, um, 
the design side with my services, but I also do e-courses, which brings in another income there. It's not as stable as my design services. It's usually in chunks all at once with registration. And then I also have the library, which is, um, which is subscription-based, so it's month after month, which is really helpful. Um, so I would say focus on if you want to make a profit, um, even though it's good to have a loyal following and a lot of people say that size isn't important audience is important because that's the more people that you have the bigger your audience and building loyalty with them um, the greater chance you're exposing your business to more people to a wider audience who's going to buy your products and book your services and I would also suggest um, diversifying your income and having multiple streams of income and getting creative with that I hope that was helpful. And I just might have a resource about um, finances and pricing yourself coming up as well. Um, that might be another good L chat to do. So stay tuned. Um, all right, I'm trying to go in order. Ellen says, what would be more attractive to you guys to subscribe to a fitness blog, a fitness challenge with a community? Ooh, eBooks, um, oh, eBook workbook compiled with workouts. I'm going to throw this out there. I don't normally follow along with um, very many fitness blogs, although I probably should. Um, I found one fitness site the other day. It's called Kayla It Signs is her name. And I've been blown away by her marketing strategies more than anything. Um, she geared her blog and her business toward young women um, in their late teens, 20s, and probably 30s as well. And she put together guides. And they're all online, so it doesn't cost her anything every time someone buys a guide. And they're ebooks with a nutrition plan and a fitness plan. And um, and I mean, I thought that that was brilliant. So, um, and she's really profitable and has millions of followers now. So, just something to consider, Ellen. Um, you might want to check that out and, and take a look at it. All right. Um, oh, good. I love that you guys are jumping in and giving your thoughts on that too. Um, Courtney Lee says, so our two year goal is to host wellness events for women by women. We have a team of contributors with many areas of expertise. Any ideas on how to, how to tunnel our focus, I like that, tunnel your focus, to ensure that we have an audience for those events in the future? Let me read through it one more time and collect my thoughts. Host wellness events, have a team of contributors, Tunnel your focus to ensure that you have an audience for those events. Are you blogging about them? Um, that would be a great way to tunnel your focus and get interest, especially if, depending on where you're hosting these events, um, I think the wider audience you have, I know with Ellen Company, it's fun to look at the stats and see where most of our readership is coming from. So you might look there too of where you should host your events um, and where your audience is coming from. Share helpful content similar to what you'll be talking about in those events to really attract the people who would be interested in those events. Um, a lot of a lot of my answers are going to be blogging, but it really is such an awesome marketing tool. Content marketing um, is underestimated by many um, creative entrepreneurs. All right. Should I spend a lot of, Tasha asks, should I spend a lot of my time worrying about a pretty website and win landing page or should I streamline what I have and go for it? Hmm. I'm a little partial to this one too. Um, but I would say um, go for it and um, really pursue it and then you can tweak the design as you go. I think it's more important to get it up and running. I think a lot of times we can, um, our perfectionist nature can have us want to get it just right and think through it a little too much, although it's good to have a plan. I think we can um, try to plan too much to create this awesome launch and we miss the bigger picture of just getting started and getting your feet wet. And then um, as you get going, you can tweak the design. So yeah, don't tell the other designers I said that, but you can tweak the design as you go. I would just go ahead and get started with your idea. All right, um, great. Crystal says, building an audience, besides blogging, what are some free or low-cost ways to get your brand out there? Instagram, other ideas in the first year. Um, I think 
some free low cost ways would be to do other content. You could do podcasting. You could do videos is an awesome way to get your, um, get your name out there. Social media is great. Um, a lot of people are talking about Facebook ads right now and you can choose your cost for those, but it's great because you can choose your audience and specify your audience. Um, like I said, social media is great. You can now um, pay for promoted pins, which might also be a really great way to do it. I would start networking with people to get your name out there. You might partner with people, or collaborate in some way. Networking has been huge for my business. Um, so start emailing people and maybe offer an exchange or something along those lines. Um, but that could be helpful. But yes, might have to do an L chat on building your audience and creative ways to do that. These are, you're giving me a lot of L-chat ideas here. It's good to know what you all are interested in. Um, all right, let's see. Great, I think I may have answered, answered them. I might take a break from questions for just a second to let you in on a fun resource that Jake and I have been discussing we're gonna try out. And it's through a Slack forum. So for those of you who have heard of Slack, I'm gonna, I'm going to change this around um, and share my screen with you. Bear with me for just a second. All right. Oops, that is not what I wanted. All right. So this is a Slack form. It doesn't look so pretty at the moment. Maybe it'll, maybe there's a way to customize that. I need to do more um, research into that. However, I really wanted to create more of a community, especially for the people joining in in LChats. So um, I started this Slack forum. So aside from Thursday nights when we have these time, this time together to talk about topics, I thought it would be really helpful to have a forum um, for all of us to talk through some of these topics in more depth so that you can ask specific questions or you can leave feedback about each one of the L chats or just in general. I thought it would be great for networking. Um, I'll hop in from time to time with feedback, but this is really for community. So just like you were doing in that chat, that's why I was so happy to see that you all were um, talking back and forth to each other, brainstorming ideas, asking questions. That's what the Slack forum is for. So if you aren't familiar with Slack, um, really it's just a basic forum. So this is our general channel of the Slack forum, and I just created it today, so it's looking a little bare. Hopefully you all will help with that once you, um, once you join in. But for each week, we're going to have a different channel for finding your focus. This was this week's L chat, And as I continue to do L chats, I'll come up with um, different channels there that are on more specific topics. But um, this is just a way to build community around the L chat to be innovative. You can see up here I said a community of innovative creative entrepreneurs. I really want ideas to be shared here. It kind of serves as a mastermind group too. So for example, for this week, if you're having a really hard time still narrowing down your focus, or like one of you said earlier in the chat, I can't remember who it was, I wish I could, um, so that they can't think of enough ideas or they need someone to brainstorm with, this is a great place to do just that. Um, and like I said, as we continue to do more all chats, I'll add them on here. You won't have to sign up each week once you um, once you ask for an invitation to the group, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. You'll be automatically included, and you can um, jump in week after week, and you don't have to sign up again. You also you can also get notifications um, when someone messages you. So, for example. Um, if you are talking back and forth with someone else, you can just use their username with their handle. Um, so you would do at and then somebody else's username. But it's fairly straightforward um, and fairly simple. If you have any questions about it once you get started, feel free to send me an email or even ask me on here. Um, I'm happy to do that too. If, um, but yeah, so it's fairly simple and straightforward. We'll see how it goes. I really hope that you all find it helpful. It's just another resource, an interactive resource, other than blog comments or something like that, a way for all of us to talk back and forth, share ideas, and be innovative together. Um, so if you're interested in joining this forum, you can go to lchat.heroku app. It's H-E-R-O-Q-U-E. 
A-P-P. I'll add this to our chat right now. And all you have to do is enter your email address and add this in here. So I just added it in the comments. Um, and you can click on it there and, oh good, I'm glad that you, you all like this idea. Um, you can enter your email address, it'll send you an invitation, you can set up your account for this um, Slack group, and then we can just get rolling with it. Um, so if I didn't see one of your questions, if I you know overlooked it for some reason, um, feel free to ask it in this Slack form, I'll go back to it. But again, that was lchat.com. Heroku app, H-E-R-O-Q-U-A-P-P dot com, and, um, and you can join this new Slack forum, our new LChat Slack forum. Um, so I have about 10 more minutes for questions. I would love to know what you all think about this new forum. Um, if you're excited about it, um, I'm going to switch things back. Let's see here. I'm trying to get back to my face. All right. There we go. That should work. Okay, I'm back. Um, but again, let me know what you think about this Slack form. Oh, I see some of you are already joining in. This makes me so happy. Um, great. So, like I said, feel free throughout the week. Ask questions. Um, you know, network with other creatives. Leave your ideas. Um, so that's what it's there for. And then every week with those little channels, I'll add a new channel, and that's where you can find specific feedback or questions or ideas on those channels. Let's see. Great. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, are there any other questions? Again, you can do it in the Slack form. Courtney Lee, awesome. Thanks for joining. Um, I think that might be it, so maybe we'll jump off a few minutes early. I'll wait one more second if some of you are typing. Great. I'm seeing so many of you join in. I'm loving this. Um, well, great. Let's see. No more questions, it looks like. Like I said, if you come across any, please feel free to use that Slack forum. I hope that you all have a wonderful night. Thank you for taking the time to join in. Um, I'll be sure to email. Actually, I'll add the slides to our Slack forum um, so you can access them there. But I hope that you all have a great night. Thanks so much for signing up for the group. And I will see you for next week's L Chat. Um, I'll give you a little information about that before I sign off. I'm going back to my site. If you go to ellencompanydesign.com and go to the main page, um, the home page, and you scroll down, you can see a look at all of our upcoming events. Um, so next week, November 19th from 8 to 9 o'clock p.m. is choosing a color palette for your brand. So we're going to go over color. That's more of a design-based. I'll chat there. And I'll give more details about this in our Slack forum. Um, and then for December 10th, that's the last one of the year before the holidays. Um, it's going to be on organizing the content of your website. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and sign up for those webinars and mark those dates on your calendar to join in. Those are some things to look forward to. But um, I hope that you have a great night. Thank you for joining in, and I hope to see you next Thursday. Bye.